so need I say more? I, I kind of began to go for sports, and I put my violin down, and my father didn't like that very much, but uh, he never forced us. That was the beauty about it. He never told me, you have to rehearse two hours a day. He just, he just leave me alone. And uh, so I became very good at sports. I guess I have uh, a natural sense of timing because I became uh, all city in Chicago for three years in a row in athletics. I was a good runner, fast runner. I played football, played baseball. I was a pitcher. I pitched two no-hit games in one year. The Cubs were interested in giving me a tryout, but I was too small. Hell, I weighed 135 pounds. I could never do it. But it made me feel good that uh, some of the scouts would come to the park and say, oh, we'd like to give you a tryout. And I said, oh, I'm too small. My father would say, no, he can't. He's too small to play baseball. So anyway, I went out to Cubs Park, Wrigley Field, and uh, <laughs> I was... You know, just throwing the ball around, having a good time. And, of course, the people there said, well, he's too small to play. But he's got a lot of potential and speed and fast. And I had a good eye for the ball. I could I could hit a ball over over the fence, you know, but not uh, in Wrigley Field. I mean, in the local parks. And so I got to be a very good athlete. And I just went along. And, of course, being an athlete, all the girls would chase me and everything. And I didn't, I was very bashful. I didn't fool around. I, I thought that was terrible. I, you know, how little boys are, oh, girls, who, who needs that, you know? Um, same attitude that they have now, the little boys. You tell them, do you have a girlfriend? They say, nah, are you kidding? Then you ask a gr little girl if she has a boyfriend, and she'll say, I have four. You know, this is such a, such a difference. But uh, the thing is that... Uh, Somehow or other, I started to miss strumming my violin. So I went back there and I picked up the violin and I started playing again. Well, by this time, in school, I used to watch these little bands that they were organizing in school. You know, in school class, they had a, a trumpet, a saxophone, a this and that. And I asked the teacher, can I join the band? She said, sure, bring your violin. So I brought the violin and I'm strumming away the violin and all these other guys are playing saxophones and trumpets and all that. Yeah, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. And guess who was in the band? The great Jimmy Zito. He was one of the boys in the band uh, in the Jefferson Grammar School in Chicago. Um, Ashland and Roosevelt, the near west side where all the Capone gangsters uh, used to hang out, you know. Uh, they were they were they were beautiful people, really. They used to watch over us kids so so closely. I mean, uh, we were like 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 gems, you know. They watched the children from the neighborhood all the time. No matter what we did, they were there. If we needed help anywhere in the city, we had a special telephone number that we used to call, and they would be there to take bail us out. In less than two or three minutes, you'd see three limousines of gangsters coming out there to bail us out of the trouble we're in. So uh, it was it was good living in a neighborhood like that. But musically, I was learning to play. And like I said, Jimmy Zito was in the band. Uh, later on, I find out he came to Hollywood and became a a great uh, musician out here. He was he was good. Um, played with uh, some of the great studio bands and. Yeah, in fact, we used to see them in Chicago when they'd have these uh, shorts on symphonies, and I would see Jimmy Zito playing trumpet, and, and all the gang. Hey, there's Jimmy. So I said, Gee, someday I hope, I hope I could be that good, you know, that I could be on the movies and TV and all that. And, uh, people used to tell my dad how great I was, how good I was, and and you know when people implant ideas in your head, you don't realize it at the time, but uh, you act them out. Your subconscious acts them out. So I got to um, act out my studies, and then and I ended up to be a very fairly good musician. I used to go to the to the, when I went when I finally went to high school. I used to ditch school with my mother. Used to give me twenty five cents to, for lunch every day. So I used to sneak on the elevated. 
and go downtown and, and go to the Oriental or the Chicago or the uh, State and Lake Theater. Uh, they always had uh, live shows and a movie. And us school kids would be able to get in there for 16 cents. So I had nine cents to spare. And if I saved my money for a couple of days, I had 50 cents. So I'd go to the Oriental Theater or something early, probably the first people in there when the doors open. So I'd get in the front row center or close to front row center and watch uh, Johnny Scat Davis. Uh, he's a Mal Torme. I used to watch uh, the Ritz Brothers, uh, the Three Stooges in person. They used to have shows, you know, live shows. And, all the big bands used to come out, sit there and just look. I was just so amazed at uh, how beautiful the music stands looked. I always used to wait for the moment when the curtain went up and, and look at the music stands of these different bands and say, oh, I like that other guy's better or this one. They all have such beautiful music stands for the band. And that used to fascinate me, something terrible. I mean, I, I used to live just to go see the music stands. <laughs> that was funny. Um, I used to see Xavier Cougat, and uh, uh, he had a girl, Lina Romay, who used to sing with the band, and she was beautiful. I fell in love with her, you know. She was so gorgeous. It probably still is. I don't know, but um, I used to sit in that front row and look up there and say, someday I'm going to be up there. Someday I'm going to be working up there with Mr. Cougat. Well, that's another thought went through him. I forgot about it. I start learning more about music, and then I start playing trumpet. I start playing all the instruments I could gather in the house. I was just like my father. We had a bunch of instruments, and we played them all, and none of them fantastically well, but we made songs, you know, and we loved it. It was fun. I loved it. Music was in my heart. Uh, uh, the war came up in 1941 when... Uh, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. I was only 16 years old, but um, when when that happened, no, I was yeah, I was around there, around that age. What was I? Oh, well, and I'm, I think I was 17 years old because I got drafted the year after the war started, and I went to war. Well, before that. The neighborhood used to always have little bands, and uh, my sister, she used to play bass. Uh, I don't know whatever made her want to play bass, but um, I guess my father saw her interested in it and started getting her some lessons on bass. So she started playing bass, and, and uh, naturally, having the bass at home, I used to say, ooh, that's a big violin, and, and I used to play, and it was easy for me. <laughs> playing violin, the bass came fairly easy. So I used to tell the neighborhood boys, hey, I'm a bass player, I'm a bass player. I, I kind of hated to say violin because you always feel like uh, you're a sissy or something, you know, playing violin. But they used to see me. And the trumpet, I, I, I took it only because I used to love to watch the buglers in, in school play taps. And I said, oh, I'd like to learn how to play taps on that instrument. 